This is Tornado Talk, a weekly podcast about one of nature's most fascinating phenomena. Share your tornado story online by email or call us toll free 800 439 1570. That's 800 439 1570. Now, meteorologist Jennifer Naramore and Dan Holliday, Tornado Talk is on. Oakfield, Wisconsin is a quiet rural community in the southeastern part of the state. About a thousand people live there. The village is named after its tall oak trees, some of which could be 120 feet tall. But everything changed on Thursday, July 18th, 1996. A powerful tornado ripped through Oakfield, changing the way it looked and the way residents lived for years to come. Warning coordination meteorologist Tim Halbach of the National Weather Service in Milwaukee. From my point of view, I was looking southwest to where the supercell was, and from my vantage point, it just looked like a big cloud that was on the ground. WISN-TV chief meteorologist Mark Baden. An interesting thing with Oakfield, uh, it sits up on a ledge, and the the local legend was, though the ledge is going to keep us safe from tornadoes. Uh, and that really was very prevalent. This is Tornado Talk, wild weather in Wisconsin, the 20th anniversary of the Oakfield tornado that occurred the early evening of July 18th, 1996. Wisconsin, and especially Fond du Lac County, is not known for tornado outbreaks. In fact, long-lived and damaging tornadoes are very rare. Mark Baden at WISN-TV explains. I'd say about 80 to 90 percent of our tornadoes are the little quick spin-ups, EF0, EF1s, very difficult to detect, very difficult to forecast. We we had one earlier this year that moved through Brandon, which is uh, in, also in Fond du Lac County, uh, which was about it's about 20 miles to the west of, of Oakfield. And that one did not get a warning. Uh, it's always one that you, you hate when they happen. Uh, but it, it rolled through. It was, it was a small tornado, but uh, but did do some damage. Thankfully, no injuries at all. Uh, but uh, that's what, it doesn't last very long, usually five minutes, 10 minutes. Winds max out at about 80, 90 miles per hour usually. That's what we get across the majority of Wisconsin. But occasionally, we can get things that come together. And the summer is our, our big time, especially in the June the the thing we we usually miss out on here is having enough upper air support. We don't get we don't get the strong enough winds aloft to to create the the great supercell environment. But occasionally we do, uh, and we will get uh, we'll get the strong tornado. We've we've had certainly a, a a fair share of tornadoes in in Wisconsin. Just the southeastern part of the state. The last four years has been uh, very very quiet. July eighteenth was different. A unique setup in the atmosphere, according to warning coordination meteorologist Tim Halbach of the National Weather Service in Milwaukee. Tim says the conditions that occurred twenty years ago sound eerily familiar to other summertime tornado stories. I believe we had a, a warm front that was set up from northwest to southeast and uh storm had uh it was it was a supercell thunderstorm obviously to get that high of a rating on a tornado but um it had tracked for a while through central wisconsin and didn't produce a tornado for a while and then uh got into uh fond du lac area that's when it started to produce tornadoes so a good uh, low pressure system um you know, typical setup for this time of year where we have high humidity and you get a little bit of wind aloft and it uh, produced enough wind shear to produce the tornado. At about 6.15 p.m. on July 18, 1996, a supercell thunderstorm produced a tornado that took direct aim on Oakfield. Twelve people were injured and damage was estimated at $40 million. According to a case study from the University of Wisconsin-Madison, 47 of 320 homes were destroyed. 56 homes, businesses, and churches were heavily damaged. Then Governor Tommy Thompson declared a state of emergency. The twister headed east-southeast moments before it entered Oakfield. Once it began carving into the village, it changed direction heading straight east, a path that would take it right through town. WISN-TV Chief Meteorologist Mark Baden said while thunderstorms are common, this would be the last thing anyone would expect to happen in Oakfield that day. And and I think like a lot of areas that don't get necessarily hit all that often, there's a lot of apathy. And there was there was certainly apathy uh, in, in areas of Fond du Lac County and all the way through southeastern Wisconsin. Uh, the, the sad thing is that apathy has returned because, you know, when people get excited it's after the events happen and then all of a sudden every thunderstorm they think is going to be uh, Armageddon. 
And I, I think that was the case. There was a, an interesting thing with Oakfield. Uh, it sits up on a ledge, and the the local legend was, though so the ledge is going to keep us safe from tornadoes. Uh, and that really was very prevalent. Uh, thankfully, uh, they did get the warning out. Sirens were, uh, they did have sirens in that area, even though it is fairly rural parts of, uh, of Fond du Lac County. Uh, sirens were, uh, were sounded. Uh, people did take shelter. Uh, nobody died, and so that's pretty good from an F5 that goes right through the middle of town. Uh, not a huge town by any stretch, under 1,000 people. But uh, what, what I remember most covering it uh, years later when we did the 10-year anniversary 10 years ago uh, was just the, the, the interesting part of, of how where it started because it just started just west of Oakfield itself. And then the tornado just ripped literally right through the center of town. And on the west side of town, uh, there is a canning factory. And most of the tornado itself, the path is from the northwest to the southeast. Um, but however, when it went into town, it was almost moving exactly due east. Um, and so that was kind of interesting. And it just bisected the town, tore through, and it's called Oakfield because it was all these huge old oak trees. And literally almost all of those were destroyed. All these old Victorian homes that were there were, were pretty much flattened. Uh, it, it became an F5 after it had moved through Oakfield. It uh, temporarily got uh, a bit stronger. And that's when we had the, uh, the damage that was completely, houses were completely removed. There was nothing, no possessions left in the house whatsoever. Everything in the basements were completely removed. There was nothing left. And th that's where they had cars that were thrown uh, almost four to 500 feet. The tornado was so strong that it leveled the Friday Canning Company, then the largest private vegetable canning company in the United States. States. Its products, including sweet canned corn, was sold worldwide. One resident said an I-beam from the factory was tossed through her front window, missing her grand piano by inches. Barbara Rohde lived in Oakfield that day and told WITI-TV in an interview about the Twister's Wrath. We looked out the back door and there's this huge funnel coming through our backyard. It's just like everything is cracking and shattering. My husband, you know, was praying, and, and I just, I knew we'd be okay. Survey teams in Oakfield would find the tornado did some F5 damage. That made it one of the strongest twisters ever in the state, and the worst in 1996. That was the strongest tornado in the U.S. Uh, and so, yeah, Wisconsin, we've only had three uh, F5 tornadoes, or EF5, and actually we have never had an EF5 since the uh, scale was changed. Despite the damage that occurred, Tim Halbach of the National Weather Service said that ample warning was given, even though the data on radar didn't look like something that would produce a strong tornado. If you were to, to look at the radar data, it wasn't the, the strongest rotation that you'd ever see on, you know, typically what you'd see with the outbound, inbound velocities. It was kind of a, a small couplet that uh, produced this. And I mean, if you looked at the reflectivity at all, it was the normal hook echo, classic supercell look, but the, the velocities didn't, weren't actually that strong on it. Um, but uh, yeah, people had fair warning and were able to get into the basements. Uh, most people here in Wisconsin have basements, so they have a pretty good uh, safe place to go to when uh, something like that goes through. The remarkable statistic is that not one person lost their life. After all, when a tornado does F5 damage, it is hard to avoid injuries or deaths. But there is a theory as to why injuries and loss of life were minimal. WISN-TV meteorologist Mark Baden believes it to be true. I knew the warning coordination meteorologist who was there at the time, who just retired a few years back, his name was Rusty Capella, and he was he was firmly convinced, and I, I agree with him. County fair is a big deal in Fond du Lac County. Uh, I mean, you get into rural parts of Wisconsin, and certainly rural parts anywhere in the United States, I think county fairs are a big deal. And a huge portion of the, of, of uh, Oakfield, they did. They did attend the county fair, and so when this happened, this was uh, this was at the fairgrounds, and it didn't come anywhere close to that. And so these people came back uh, to find their 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 town pretty much devastated. From all tornadoes, there are stories never to be forgotten and lessons to be learned. I've become friends with uh, somebody who was playing softball that day where the storm literally almost uh, formed right over their heads. Uh, and uh, they, they didn't really know what was going on. She's become a, uh, a, a storm chaser uh, as well as a Skywarn uh, person. And so she's, she's interesting because that really solidified her interest in weather uh, was that day was witnessing what was happening. And they, 
they were there watching as this was coming in, but they were still trying to get their game in. And uh, I mean, I wouldn't recommend what they were doing. There's still thunder around. And then as she describes, it got perfectly still, but they heard this sound, uh, this low rumble. And then uh, it got worse and worse. And then they, thankfully some, some of the parents came in, in pickup trucks and they all ran into the uh, pickup truck and drove uh, safely away as this thing was coming through. There's video that I just uh, found for the first time. I didn't know it existed until about three years ago. It's uh, the Fond du Lac Reporter, which is uh, the paper up there. Found somebody had video that uh, I don't know why we didn't know about this. But it's worthwhile taking a look at. That raw video, by the way, is posted online at TornadoTalk.com. Today, Tim Halbach helps save lives by warning the public in one of the highest positions at the National Weather Service in Milwaukee, And it was this tornado on that July day in 1996 that fueled his interest in severe weather. I'd always liked storms, uh, but I didn't really get interested into meteorology until after after that and into college. At that point, I was just at my my parents' house and uh, sitting in the driveway listening to the play-by-play by some of the local radio commentators about uh, people giving their eyewitness reports to what was going on. And from my point of view, I was north and looking south, southwest to where the supercell was. And from my, from my vantage point, it just looked like a big cloud that was on the ground. And I think it was so far away that it was just initially just the wall cloud that I was seeing. And then uh, as it went through Oakfield and then ended up roping out closer to where my, my parents' home was, that's where I got the closest view of, of the tornado. So at that point, when it was the closest to me, it was kind of in the dissipating stage of it. But definitely uh, a, a unique experience that I can still envision today. And I think that's that was my uh, my seed into getting into meteorology. 20 years later, those who lived through the tornado may be thankful that no one died that day, but the fear of what happened still lingers. We contacted residents who saw the tornado's wrath in Oakfield, but declined to talk about it. For many, they are thankful, but just as well would forget July 18th, 1996. Two decades later, you can still see the twister's marks. The trees, are, it, it, you can still see where it went through because there are areas where you have these big, huge old oak trees. And then there are areas where the trees are only now 30 to 40 feet tall, as opposed to being 100 to 125 feet tall. And so you can you can still see the path where it went through right through town. But the canning factory is back and going, and it's, it's, a, it's a very pleasant, uh, great rural Wisconsin town. The most important lesson is that everyone in Oakfield still has each other after wild weather occurred in Wisconsin. You learn very quickly you don't need things because they're gone. Next on Tornado Talk, Thursday, July 7th, 2016. Damaging tornadoes tear through Greenwood County, Kansas, striking the town of Eureka. Residents quickly run for cover. No injuries, no loss of life. Taking the EF scale to Eureka on episode 13 of Tornado Talk. This has been Tornado Talk, powered by thestormreport.com.